What I love about the millennials is your bluntness in telling us what you think. Um, the way you network um, and mobilize views if we want you to. Um, the fact that you are so driven by purpose and you absolutely do not like uh, tolerating inauthenticity. Um, that's what I think is different. Um, however, I must say that at the end of it, I also believe that your generation is inspiring the Gen X to also change the way we, we want to behave in the workplace. So it's a great influence for us. I now work with more virtual teams. Um, so I had, I was really privileged to work with a couple of very smart millennials just in the last couple of years. And what they do is they make me a better person. And I, and I think from, from a perspective of always keeping me real, um, I loved uh, the fact that they challenged the way I manage, the way I think. But I think what I had to learn, and it was quite humbling to learn, is that you have to listen. And if you're not listening, listening authentically, uh, they will lose interest very fast. There are three or four steps that I think you need to get right. Is an early talent identification process. And uh, most companies are not very good with that still. So how do you know where your talent is grooming? Where is it blossoming? And to, in order to do that, you need to provide sufficient opportunity to be able to go really to the bottom of uh, the organization. The second is to create meaningful experiences. I think gone are the days where I'm going from, you know, from becoming a manager, an assistant manager, to a manager, to a director. It's going to be, learning is going to come based on missing skill gaps, uh, missing experiences that are going to help enrich the roles that you would want to take on. So it's very much focused on experience-based development rather than just development for the development's sake. And I think the third one is to really be able to have uh, pipelines, to have either you have value roles that you create, you should know where people can aspire to and be able to finally have those honest conversations of what it's going to take. We call it going for a walk in the park or going for a walk in the forest. If it's going for a walk in the forest, it's probably a more difficult conversation that you're gonna have with the person. If you go for a walk in the park, it's probably telling them that they have the right skills and the right experiences, the right attitudes. I would say really focus on, firstly, driving your passion. Because if you don't like what you do, don't do it. It's not worth it. It will not sustain you for a long time. The second would be look at opportunities for getting involved. And you can get involved in a lot of ways, uh, whether it's you know, participating in forums, participating virtually, being, just going in and asking and giving opinions on what you think, and hopefully also listening meaningfully to what others are saying. And the final one is to con constantly remain curious because there's a huge piece, there is so much information that is flowing our way. How can you channel your learning in a very quick way? because you're going to face situations that you've never faced before. And the question is, how are you going to handle them? What will you do when you didn't know what to do about a situation? And if you can demonstrate agility in doing that, that's where you're going to be most successful.